Now, um, basically what happened, I'll, I'll explain pretty much what happened for anybody who doesn't know, who's not really familiar with the news and what's been going on. So, uh, in general, there was a, a big protest yesterday. There was a, a demonstration. Uh, Donald Trump and a number of other people organized it for people to protest the results of the election. They, they thought the election was fraudulent, so they went to protest the results of the election. Uh, in the process of that happening, um, people broke into the Capitol building did all kinds of bad shit, stole shit out of it, uh, like basically invaded people's like private offices and, and just did all kinds of crazy shit. Real time, yeah, real time rating, man. Well, the, the thing is, the real time rating, I see people, man, I saw these pictures of these guys. They're walking out, dude. There's this one guy, he's literally got the fucking speaker's podium. You guys probably know the picture I'm talking about. He's like this. It's like, man. They're gonna find out. Like, are, are you kidding me? And you know what's so fucking funny about that? Is a lot of those same fucking people don't believe in wearing a mask, so they're more easily identifiable. That's like straight up fucking natural selection. I couldn't even believe it. Like, are you crazy? At least try to hide your face. Really, it's insane. I, it made literally no sense to me. This is generally like, I think that most reasonable person uh, most reasonable people look at this and, and view it as a disgrace. This is a disgrace that people would go in there and do that to the Capitol building. I, I think it's ridiculous. They should have burnt. No, they shouldn't have burned anything, dude. They should. They should have fucking stayed out of the building because that's what the law says to fucking do. And so anyway, uh, this happened. And um, anyway, uh, somebody got shot because she was. Uh, There's this lady who's like climbing in a window and not obeying the police, and the police shot her. So, um, basically what happened with the PogChamp guy, I, I just want to explain pretty much the story so you guys have the context around it. Um, so, what, four people died? Yeah, uh, was it four? Okay, um, well this is like, I think the first person, uh, and the police shot this lady. And, um, yeah, they, they shot her, she was going in the Capitol building, they told her not to, she, she did it anyway, they shot her. Um, you know, argue, you know, like, you can say NA cops, you can say listen to cops, I don't know. Like, anyway, I'll talk about probably more of that later. So anyway, um, the guy, the PogChamp guy, this is the, uh, Gutex, Gutex, um, makes a tweet and he says, um, he says, it is, it, is there going to be civil unrest today or is the, the MAGA martyr hashtag, uh, going to have died in vain? Now, this is what he said. Now, um, Twitch interpreted this as a call to violence. I think that it, while it is not a direct call to violence, it is about as close to a call to violence as possible. And it is so much of a call to action that that is almost verbatim what Aragorn has said in Lord of the Rings in Helm's Deep. Right before they rode out to fight the army. So this is clearly an inspiration for action, okay? Like this is this is clearly what it is, and and this is what happens to people. And I think a lot of people need to understand this, okay? This is an unfortunate reality that we live in. But the fact is that there's a lot of people out there that get left behind by the system, that get alienated by their peers, that get basically this is what happens, right? You have somebody like this who gets, uh, you know, they get themselves into these like real real deep conspiracy theories, right? And, and they get really really into it. And the problem with what happens is that these things are uh, they're self-perpetuating and it's like a death spiral because once you start getting into some conspiracy theories you start alienating yourself from some people and then by alienating yourself from some people it creates a confirmation bias and the person's head to get in the conspiracy theories that to some degree that they're right so it what happens it this is not it's not a good thing and i think that what we need to realize here with a lot of these people and by the way i, I think that twitch probably made the right decision with uh what do you call it, with doing this I, I think that it was the right call overall uh getting rid of the emote was the right call. I, I don't support anybody uh, bringing up like violence or saying anything like that. And so with him doing that, uh, I, I agree. It's just an emote. What the fuck? Uh, I don't actually, and I, I want to preface this by also saying this other thing, okay? I don't think this was necessary by Twitch. 
This was not necessary. This was Twitch doing it probably because uh, of being a uh, risk adverse. You know, they don't want to have somebody that's representing their website that makes them look bad and they could potentially lose money. But realistically, when is an advertiser going to look at an emote on Twitch and then take the person th who the emote is a part of, look at their entire fucking history, and then say, oh, well, we're not going to do business with you because you have an emote of somebody who made a tweet that was bad one time. Right, this is, or not one time, but like, you know, like it started making bad tweets. Like this is not really what's going to happen. So I, I do understand like people's frustration with it as well, because ultimately I don't think this was really a necessary decision by Twitch. I think it's more of a symbolic decision. And I, a certain degree, I'm not really a huge fan of that, but I can see why they did it. I think that overall, um, regardless, I, I think the guy's a moron. Okay, I, I think he's a fucking moron. The problem with a lot of this, and this is my opinion, the problem with a lot of this is you have people like Gutex who have been marginalized by society. They've been pushed aside. They've felt excommunicated from places that they feel like they should be part of. They've been, they've lost their place in society. And they go on the internet and they look for a reason why. Some people find Jesus, some people find Alex Jones, some people find Antifa. But the end result of all of these things is dogmatic behavior and faith in things that are not necessarily true and real. And the usage of that faith and that belief to harm other people. That's what really happens. So whenever you look at these people and you see how, you know, you think to yourself how terrible these people are, yes, they are doing bad things. Th that's true. But many of the times the reason why they do these bad things is because they think that they're doing a good thing. They think that they're in the right. And a lot of these people are not these secret, scheming, maniacal terrorists or whatever. These are people who have been abandoned and marginalized by society, who have turned to the internet and radicalized themselves in their own echo chamber. And as time has gone on, it's gotten worse and worse and worse. And now we're at a boiling point for a lot of those people and we're starting to see them emerge. That's really what it is. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. I'm going to give you a very, very small like metaphor for this or a very small example of this that happens on Twitch regularly. And maybe you'll be able to understand what I'm saying. Have you ever seen somebody in chat get banned for something and then say that they got banned because they were speaking the truth? Because for me, as a streamer, I hear that all the time. I hear that all the fucking time. So there is clearly a correlation with people who get banned and socially ostracized to then being radicalized by that ostracization, ostracized, ostracized, fucking by getting removed from society. And, and it like self perpetuates. It's a vicious cycle where like you get crazier and then more people don't want to talk to you and more people don't want to talk to you. So you get crazier and then more people don't want to talk to you because you're even crazier and then you get even crazier than that. And so it, this is what this is what happens. Censorship breeds echo chambers? No, it's not even it's not even about that. These are not it's not censorship. These are people that are going and they're making their own groups. The thing is, I think somebody has a certain right to creating their own echo chamber, but there are some times whenever things go over the line. Like I, I think that honestly a lot of these social media platforms need to look at the impact that they're having with letting people make these mass organized these like mass organized events because people die at these events. You know, like millions of dollars of property damage is created in these events. These are bad things that happen. And I think that there needs to be some responsibility for the people that that do these things. Because if you don't give them any responsibility, it's just going to keep getting worse. In general, the way that I think Twitter and these social media platforms should do things, this is my opinion on it, okay, is that I think any call to violence at all is an immediate permaban. Like, that's an immediate permaban. Any call to violence to another person or a call for destruction of property or a call for uh, anything like that. Um, Antifa too? Why would it be different for Antifa? It would be the same for, why would it, what, what was the logic of it being different from one person and not another? If you're calling for violence on somebody, it's bad. It doesn't matter who it is. It's it's still bad. 
And so uh, destruction of statues. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think that there's a process of, of, uh, of having statues removed. And I think that what we've seen in a lot in the last year, and this is like, this is what's happened, right? Is that people have equated the amount of laws that they can break to the amount of outrage that they feel. So the more, the more mad you are, the more okay it is for you to break the fucking law. And the thing is with me, is that I actually got a lot of, um, I, I got a lot of flack for this whenever I originally started talking about it at the beginning of the year, whenever there were a lot of the BLM protests, and I, I was very against the looting. I was very against all of the, uh, anybody destroying, destroying property or breaking the law, basically. I've always been a very big supporter of, you know, protesting and political action. You guys might not know this, but I, um, I, I, I'm not going to get into that, right? But I, I did political stuff quite a long time ago, right? It was very, very long time ago. But the point is that I've always been against this. I, I've been consistently against this. And But pisses me off. Pisses me off. Is now I got people that think that I wasn't. They think that I wasn't. They thought, they thought that I thought it was okay. I never said that. I remember I had a bunch of people mad at me. Because I, I condemned it. They're furious. They're like, what the fuck? You can't condemn this. And I, and, and by the way, by the way, I understand how they feel. I don't, I, I don't excuse what they do, but I understand and I see the reason for it. I get it from, from the, the BLM people and I get it from the protesters yesterday. Because here's what happens. It's a very simple question, and this is the way I used to feel about the law whenever I was younger, too. Why respect a system that doesn't respect you? And that's what they think. And at the end of the day, I, 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 can't, I can't fault somebody about that. I understand how they feel. And I think that, you know, if you look at history, there are a lot of cases of people standing up against uh, bad or uh, against the legal system or against something like that and, and winning. And these people in history are regarded as heroes to some degree. So, of course, you're going to see a lot of people that want to, in some way or another, emulate that. So you agree with people at the Capitol tearing shit up, huh? I never said that. I think anybody who stepped foot inside that Capitol building yesterday should be charged. A anybody who stepped foot in that Capitol building, it doesn't matter if you were the one that broke down the doors, if you stepped foot in that Capitol building, you should be charged. I think anybody who is destroying businesses or looting things throughout this whole year should also be charged. That That's my opinion. There's no, there, there's no justification. There's no rationalization that makes it okay. You follow the law and you do what we have all agreed as a society to do. There is a process to changing how things are. And whenever you ignore that process or you get upset because that process didn't go the way you wanted it to, that doesn't give you the right to just turn everything over, flip the board over and do whatever you want. Even if you're mad, even if you're mad, you still can't break the law. I know that might sound crazy, but it's true. You can't break the law even if you're mad. How about the French Revolution then? I find it very funny. I find it very funny that a lot of people use examples of revolts against a monarchy to rationalize destroying property in a democracy. Of course people are going to revolt against the king because they have no other recourse. Of course they're going to do that. There's no, that you can't vote the king out. You can't do anything. It's completely different. What's your opinion on Trump's involvement in yesterday's events? Um, so every single time that you do a protest or something like that, it, or the people that organize the protest responsible for the behavior of everybody at the protest? And I think the answer is not yes or no. I think it's somewhere in the middle. Now, how much of it is Trump's fault and how much of it is, is not, I don't know. I heard, and this is what I've heard, I don't know if this is necessarily true, I heard that the cops literally opened the gates for the people to go inside of the, uh, the Capitol building. 
or to go closer to the Capitol building. To me, whenever I heard that, that sounded like they did. That was a mistake. Whoever made that call should be released from the force. That's a huge fucking mistake. And unless I hear a really good reason why, uh, that's the way I feel about it. They, they should be gone. They, they, they should just be fucking gone, man. Uh, that's a, and, and selfies with them. The thing is, I saw people taking selfies with like other protesters, like at, at the uh, the rallies. But the difference with the selfies and the rallies and, and everything like that, it's like if you're taking a selfie with somebody who's literally inside the Capitol building, that per that person is actively breaking the law. It's very different than taking a selfie with somebody who's you know out there on the street protesting. It's very very different in my opinion. I passed on your side. Uh, what do you think would happen if, if people of color marched in a Capitol building like that? Um, who knows, right? Uh, I, I think that obviously, like, there were obvious... Uh, most of the people there were white, okay? Like, let's be honest, I saw most of the pictures. Most of the people there were white. If people of... If black people or, you know, the word people of color marched on it, I, I think that it would have been taken... I don't know. It's impossible to say because... I don't know if you can relegate what happens in an event like that, in an event like that, down to the outcome based off of the people's skin color. It depends on if there are people there that are agitators or not. Like, that that's what it is. Yeah, obviously, sometimes that might be bad. Sometimes it wouldn't be. Come on, dude. You've seen it? Okay, dude. They would be shot on sight? No, they would not be shot on sight. This is like the this is the insane extremism that I'm talking about. No, they would have not been shot on sight. That is nuts. Give me a fucking break. And actually, by the way, they did shoot another person who was trying to get into the Capitol building yesterday. And as far as I know, she was white. So it doesn't really matter. Um, let's see here. She yelled on sight? Yeah, I think people are being intellectually dishonest. Well, no, people think that... I and this is what happens, right? Is that this is more of the... Uh, th this is, in my opinion, more of the extremism. Uh, I, I think this is 100% like this is a 100% an extremist opinion. Obviously, yes. It, it could have been worse or not. But you can't compare an event and say this is what happened and say, yes, this is what happens and 100% it would have been completely different in this way if the person was a different skin color. That's an unfair thing to say. It's divisive. It's pointless. And there are plenty of other protests that happened in BLM where nobody got shot or hurt either. Like, this is, it, it's, it's not like this is a guarantee one way or another. People's emotions are affecting it? I think to some degree, yeah. Uh, is it right to kill terrorists? Uh, is it right to kill terrorists? Not without a trial. I mean, that's the thing, right? Is that you have to, like, here, you know, here in America... You, you don't you don't just shoot people randomly. Wait, what are the question marks? Are you kidding me? Who determines who a terrorist is? The person with the gun? What happens when they're wrong? Do you ever think about this? Do you ever think about what that really means? But like, yeah, well, are you kidding me? So based off of every single person's individual fucking d decision or idea of what a terrorist is, that means that they can go and shoot them. And everybody has a different definition of this. Some people think the guys yesterday were freedom fighters. Other ones think they're terrorists. So can half the people shoot their guns or not? What happens afterwards whenever you look and see what the actual reality is? We have a system for dealing with people that break the law and are threats to society. Use the fucking system. Yeah, we tried the fucking Nazis. You think they, they can't handle a few K-Konas or, or a few looters? We can't try a few looters, but we could handle the, the fucking the, uh, the Nazi leadership? Come on. We can do that. We've done it before. What about whenever the U.S. invades other countries like Iraq, who's making the terror? Uh, I was always against uh, the, uh, the Iraq uh, war. I was always very against that. I, it's, I thought it's a waste of our money. So, uh, yeah, I think that, yeah, I, I'm, I'm against that. Yeah, I think almost everybody was. Like, it's a waste of our money. It, it, it's a fucking, it's a waste of our fucking money. Like, we're gonna go over there. Like, every bomb that we drop on some fucking, uh, on some cave over in Iraq is a teacher's salary that we don't pay. It's a raise that we don't give. 
it's a uh, entitlement bonus for welfare for a person with kids that they don't get. It's not like there's infinite amount. There might be infinite money because you can print as much of it as you can, but there's not infinite resources. Resources are finite. And you're wasting them. Uh, that's what I think about that.